Fantastic. Well, again, uh, thank you all for coming. Great to have a chance to chat with you. My name is Eric Van Miltenberg. I'm uh, Senior Vice President of Global Operations for Ripple, uh, based in San Francisco. And in my role, I touch on a variety of things, but one of my key areas of focus is helping think through how we expand around the globe, where we open new offices, how we staff them, and then hire people to be sort of our leaders for the different regions around the world. Um, just at the, at the very base level, and some of you may already know this, but you know, Ripple is a technology company. We provide a software solution uh, to financial institutions. So our customers are banks, payment providers, money service businesses, and that software helps them to deliver a better way to move money cross-border. So we address a cross-border use case uh, by leveraging blockchain technology to um, achieve faster, more reliable, and um, less costly uh, cross-border payments. So that's what we do at a high level in, in, in uh, Southeast Asia and Asia Pac overall. Our strategy isn't dramatically different than it is around the world. We are in growth mode. We're building a network, a payments network called RippleNet. And um, every financial institution that deploys Ripple software becomes a member of RippleNet. And that gives them the ability to transact with any other member of RippleNet that uh, has deployed the software. So what that means is we get very efficient, direct, peer-to-peer -peer connectivity between two financial institutions who want to move money cross-border. And you know, later, if you want to hear more, I can tell you a little bit more about uh, the solution. Um, here specifically in Singapore, uh, we consider this a, a very strategic uh, part of the world for us. We have had an office uh, here, employees here, I should say, in Singapore for probably two and a half years. Um, we recently, I mean very recently, uh, opened up our own office. We were in a, a, a WeWork space, but the office has grown in size to 20 some odd people and we outgrew the uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, WeWork environment. So we have our own dedicated office and it really is a signal that we're committed to investing in Singapore but the whole region because we see it as very strategic. The, um, the need for more efficient, uh, more cost-effective cross-border payments in this part of the world is especially high and we're seeing great response uh, from customers here. So as a result, it makes a lot of sense for us to continue to invest. Think of XRP ours. in this example is a bridge currency. We're not trying to replace dollars or bot or yen or pesos. We're trying to make the movement of that fiat currency from country A to country B far more efficient than it is today. So you're right. The digital asset exchanges play a, a, a vital role in that, in that equation by doing the conversion from fiat to crypto. And then because from crypto, depending on the jurisdiction around the world, regulators have different views on how to use uh, digital assets. For example, in an extreme, you look at China or India, and they're 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 not friendly towards digital assets. Other markets have more sort of progressive um, uh, stances, and so we've been cautious to launch in markets where we can ensure that our customers are comfortable that there's regulatory clarity. They don't need to worry about anything. So we launched Mexico um, uh, last year. We launched uh, Philippines after that. Um, yesterday on stage, we announced that Australia was coming online. And um, there's, there's a list of countries that are on the roadmap, Thailand being one for 2020. So okay. we're not, and, and, and before, therefore, before we launch it, we, with our partners, we talk to the regulators, we want to make sure we talk to the exchanges, we want to make sure everything is clear, there's clarity, so that we don't put anybody in an awkward position. Right, okay. absolutely. No, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great question and something that um, is, is very important to me. It, it, I've been in, involved in this program that you described, the University Blockchain Research Initiative, which the acronym is UBRI. And it's a program we launched uh, about a year and a half ago at Ripple with the idea that we wanted to support universities around the world in their pursuit of research around blockchain, cryptography, digital assets, um, across a wide variety of disciplines. So we have 34 institutions from around the world, uh, Korean University being one of them, um, and that spans 14 countries, five continents, uh, engineering schools, computer science, business, 
public policy, economics, law school. So really, there's many, there's many disciplines that touch blockchain technology. And um, there's two real motivations for us doing that. One is it, it's a philanthropic, it's a charitable um, support. So we're providing financial support, but we're not dictating the type of research that they have to do. We're not claiming any rights to any innovations or IP that comes of this. We feel that it's important, one, that uh, these institutions of higher learning are always at the forefront of taking new technologies and making them widely known and accepted. So look at microprocessors or the evolution of the internet or machine learning or, or AI. In all cases, universities, academia, had played a big role to sort of make clear the full potential of the technology and the impact it could have. And you know, helped make not only the students, but, but sort of the broader public aware of where this technology could go. And we think that's really important as benefits the whole industry. Two, a, a little bit to your point, um, we need to prepare the workforce of tomorrow with the right skills and the right experiences. And we've seen statistics, um, you know, there's been a 500% increase in the number of, of uh, jobs that uh, are associated with the blockchain over the past several years, and, and that trend line is going to continue. You know, even in Singapore, LinkedIn did studies, and um, uh, roles with blockchain skill sets were among the highest rated um, job uh, experiences or, or uh, job requirements listed uh, on, on their site in Singapore. So there's a lot of evidence that the demand for this, um, this capability, this, this learning, is outpacing the supply. And we think it's important for universities to get the support that they need to equip their students with real world knowledge. This isn't about just theoretical academic stuff. We love the partnership we have uh, with Queen University. We just announced the opening of a FinTech lab here in Singapore with um, a National University of Singapore, NUS, just on Wednesday. Uh, and it's, it's fantastic. It's gonna be a, a real world kind of hands-on learning environment where uh, you know, students can work with each other, with industry, both Ripple and beyond. And we think that's gonna be critical if we're gonna realize the full potential of blockchain to, to make sure that tomorrow's workforce is being educated today with the right, uh, uh, the, the, the right uh, materials, the right curriculum, the right research Standard. opportunities. Standard. Standard. We hire only the best. <laughs> um, you know, we obviously uh, have the benefit of seeing a lot of candidates interested in what Ripple's doing around the world. Um, you know, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. We're a very mission-driven company with a set of very clear cultural values, and so that's a big part of the screen. You have to have the technical capabilities and experience for the job, but you also have to fit into the Ripple culture, which you know, I've been here since the company was about 120 people. We're over 400 people now. And the ability to preserve that culture, which allows us to work together, not only in our headquarters in San Francisco, but we have to be coordinated in about eight offices around the world. It's very challenging as you grow as, and, and keeping that unity and, and, and consistency. So um, I was joking, but we, we are fortunate that I think we do have some of the best people. Um, we, uh, but we don't look just for great resumes or schools or grade point average. Mm -hmm.